Humans have been using the phrase for a very long time and hardly any of you really understand what it means. You think unconditional love means look at some rascal who is really behaving in a bad way and just don't say anything about it. <laughs> don't rat him out. Don't talk to somebody else about him. Don't get him fired. Just love him unconditionally as you despise his behavior and most other things about him. And we say, that's maybe what you might call tolerance. In other words, you're putting up with it. You're not freaking out about it, but it is not unconditional because this condition that you are focused upon is an opinion that differs from the opinion that the source within you holds about it because the source within you is holding an unconditional point of view. Well, before this day is over, you're going to understand completely why we from source are able to hold things from an unconditional viewpoint. We'll give you a statement that you may be ready to receive and then we'll fill in the gaps as we continue over the next few hours. But the reason that we are able to focus upon any situation unconditionally is because the current conditions or the what isness of whatever it isness doesn't mean diddly squatness. In other words, what is doesn't matter because what is is only a temporary reflection of the vibration that you got going on. So we want to explain to you what we mean. You were source energy before you came into this physical body. And a part of you is focused here in this physical body, but a larger part of you is still non-physically focused. You are source energy and a part of that source energy is focused here and now. So in your human form, you sift through, you know what you don't want, you know what you do want, you continue to sift through the data and you constantly, whether you know you are doing it or not, are launching rockets of desire. We call them rockets of desire. They're your personal preferences. When someone's rude, you want them to be nicer. When you're rude, you want to be nicer. When you don't have enough money, you want more money. In other words, life just causes you to sift and sort and launch these rockets. So this vibrational becoming is happening constantly. And it is a vibrational becoming. Now, it hasn't manifested yet. Therefore, it's unconditional. You see what we're getting at? It hasn't manifested into conditions for you to observe. It hasn't manifested into a condition that is unpleasant or into a condition that is pleasant. It's a vibrational rocket of desire that has created if you've been listening to us for a while, you've seen all of our creative ways of trying to explain to you this stuff that is not physical into this, what we've been calling a vibrational reality. We even gave it the name of a vortex. It's this vibrational state of being that is the precursor to everything else that is coming for you. So this vibrational state of being, which is where your inner being stands, it's where we stand, it's who you really are, has not yet manifested. It has, it has become in terms of an idea. It has become in terms of a hope or a dream. There's enough in your vortex to keep you busy for 20 or 30 lifetimes. In other words, it is the beginning of that which you are. And you know that vortex existed before you were even born into your physical body because there was a projection of intention from non-physical. There was a vibrational reality that had so much to do about you before you were even born into this physical body. Do you see what we're getting at? This vibrational precursor of that which is you. It was like the vibrational plan. It was like the vibrational probability. It's the vibrational reality. So now you're here in your physical body. You are adding to this vibrational reality. The question that we want to help you ask and answer for yourself is how much of a vibrational gap is there between the things that life has caused me to ask for and the things that I believe, the things that I practice in my thought. And you can tell two ways you can tell. One is by the way you feel if you're joyful. There's no gap. If you're feeling appreciation, there's no gap. If you're angry, quite a big gap. That's one way you can tell by the emotions that you feel. But the other way is you can tell by how things are manifesting because when who you are and what you want and what you think on a regular basis are in the same vibrational frequency, it's manifesting all around you. Others can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it too. It is a reality. It is a what is, it is a manifestation. You want to call it reality. It is real in the sense that others see it too. 
But we so want you to understand that before there is a reality, the way you want to call it reality, there is a vibrational reality. And that vibrational reality, that vibrational reality is filled with all that you have become and are becoming. And you have the ability, if you understand what we're talking about here, to close that gap and have what you want. We wrote this book called Getting Into the Vortex. And you listened to us for a while about it with a, a, an enormous amount of patience, we thought, because we're telling you, just get in the vortex, get in the vortex. That's where everything you want is. And then you began getting a little feisty with us, demanding things like, how do we get into the vortex? <laughs> And we would say to you, everything you want is in there. Everything that you want. Your lover is there. Your lovers are there. Your, all of the money that you want is there. That new, new car that you want is there. Everything that you want is there. Everything that you want, everything that you have become in terms of desire is there. And then you began saying things to us like, well, okay, I accept that there is a reality. You wave Esther's arm around and you look at something that we can't see and you tell us that everything that we want is in there. So just tell me, Abraham, how do I get my money out of the vortex and into the bank? <laughs> how do I turn this airy fairy vibrational reality into reality that I can see and hear and smell and taste and touch? I want to drive it and I want to sleep with it and I want to spend it. I want the tangible manifestation. I want real life manifestation. I don't want to just dream all the time. And we say, we want you to have that real life too. And you are having real life. And the real life that you're having is a vibrational match to the thoughts that you're thinking all the time. We're just suggesting that you could, if you care about the way you feel, close that gap between your dreams and desires and who you really are and what you are allowing into your experience. So over time, we've expressed this to you in a variety of ways. And for the most part, you're up to speed with what we've been talking about. We tell you that you are vibrational and you hardly ever resist that idea anymore. We tell you that this universe is managed by the law of attraction. The law of attraction manages vibrations. You can't set your radio dial on 98 FM and hear what's being broadcast on 101 AM. In other words, the frequencies have to match up. And if they don't, the transmitter and the receiver aren't on the same frequency, then the receiver doesn't receive what the transmitter is transmitting. It's just simple laws of physics. And law of attraction is exactly the same way. You can't set your dial on Henri and have lovely things come into your experience. They are different vibrational frequencies. So then we began to talk to you about your emotions and what your emotions mean. And we talked about the different emotions that you might have all the way from despair, all the way up to appreciation and love and joy. We began talking about the disc that you might be on, the spinning disc of emotion. If you're on the honorary disc, you're not going to rendezvous with people who are on the happy disc. It just doesn't happen. Law of attraction doesn't match you up that way. And today, what we want to say to you, because we know you've been following along with this to a certain extent, we want to give you the peace, the only peace that has ever been missing for you. We want you to understand that where you stand right here and now, now is what you've got all the time. Now, now, now. There's never tomorrow, have you noticed? Tomorrow is an illusion. It will be eaten up by today. Today, today, today. Now, 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 now. That's all you've got. You've got now, 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 now. And what you do now is what matters because all you've got is now, 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 now. And what matters in your now is that you understand that you have two perspectives of now. There's the source energy perspective, source energy who stands right in the middle of your vortex with all that you've been asking for, holding the vibrational frequency of every bit of all of that. And then there's you and what you believe right now, what you've been practicing, what you're thinking about. And your point of attraction is about what you think about. It's about what you believe. A belief is just a thought you keep thinking. So where you stand and what you believe has everything to do with how much that's in that vortex that you allow to flow into your experience. So we began talking to you about your point of attraction, you in your human body. You stand right here and now. Where you stand right here and now, what is your point of attraction? What is the vibrational atmosphere that you have created? Are you ornery? Are you irritated? Are you afraid? Are you angry? Are you blameful? Are you guilty? If you're feeling those emotions on a pretty steady basis, that means you are holding yourself steadily in vibrational discord to who you really are and what you really want. 
And the thing that is so interesting about that is that if life hadn't caused you to expand, you wouldn't even feel the discord. In other words, it's not somebody else's idea of who you should be. It's not God's idea of who you should be. It's not your mother's idea, although sometimes it feels like it, of who you should be. It's your own internal discord. Life caused you to want to be this, but you're being this. And that's what negative emotion always means. What we're wanting you to understand is that in every moment, you have a vibrational relationship with who you really are. And if you haven't become something that you're not now being, you would not feel the discord. That's the most important thing to know about your emotions. If you are not feeling good, it always means the same thing. You are not vibrationally up to speed with who you really are and what you really want. And there's no getting around it. Hear these words. There's no condition that you can wrestle to the ground in any way that is going to change that because it's not the condition that's got you all upset. It's the vibrational inconsistency. It's the vibrational variance. It's the resistance that you are introducing in this moment to a frequency that is dominant, you say. So we're eager to talk with you about anything that is important to you. It is our powerful desire that in these hours that we are together, you come to recognize that you stand in what we want to call your point of attraction. It's this vibrational, emotional mood, atmosphere it's what's going on with you and if we can convince you that through life that you have created you have a magnificent vibrational reality that has the potential of fully manifesting all the dollars you want all the relationships you want all of the material objects that you want all of the conditions and circumstances and events and lifestyle all of the lovely things that you want that life has shown you that you would feel better in the having of all of those magnificent manifestations can flow easily into your realization when you contour your mood or atmosphere in a way that does not oppose it. In other words, you can't want something that you doubt. You can't believe that you can't have something that you want and have it. So we'll be talking about that, we'll show you how to get to that place. It's so much easier than you have ever believed it to be. This business of creating your own vibrational atmosphere is so much fun because with a little bit of attention to it, you can do a big shifting in your point of attraction. And when you do a shift, even a slight shift in what you are outputting vibrationally, the differences in what comes back to you is amazing. We want you to live happily ever after. We want you to understand that there is a path that you have set into motion and that you are continuing to set into motion. And that when you figure out how to feel the vibe of your path and you work consistently by focusing to be on that vibrational frequency, that the manifestational evidence will help you to know that you are right on your path. Being the deliberate creator of your own reality does not mean looking for the path. It means creating an atmosphere that allows you to see the path right beneath your feet. Do you believe that? Do you believe that source is at your back? Do you believe that the well-being is really yours to be lived? If you don't, it's only because you've been depriving yourself of it and you're letting the now reality contour your beliefs. We want you to believe in the laws of the universe as we know them to be. We want you to believe in your emotional guidance system as you feel it all day, every day. We want you to practice thinking and feeling on purpose until you can show yourself that you can feel outside of the conditions. Very often, your own source will lead you to a realization of a problem because it is on the path toward the solution. If you don't bring a problem into focus, you sure are not going to bring a solution into focus. And without the two of them, you will not have expansion. So it's time to make peace with the contrast in general terms and to accept that all really is well with you. Stop beating up on yourself going to show you how to feel about you the way we feel about you and when you start feeling about you the way we feel about you oh the avalanche of stuff that's in your vortex will begin flowing into your experience in such a profound and magnificent way that you may very well say stop the goodness I can't take anymore <laughs> now nah, you're gluttons you'll like it all